welcome to another episode of Making Mondays. Today I will be showing you how to make this beaded cute fancy goldfish. The first time I came across this fish was during one of my shopping adventures around Hong Kong. When I first saw these I knew I had to learn to make them. This fish is slightly different compared to the ones I've seen online. First of all it uses a lot of different sized beads. The fin and the tails are slightly different as well. Also it uses two different colour beads, one for the top and a white for the underbelly. I have seen this design posted online before so I like to make this tutorial to share with you guys. First of all you will need fishing wire. If you buy the ones in the small reel the fishing wire will come out really coiled. There is a way to tame the fishing wire and I will show you how at the end of the video. You will work more faster and efficiently if your wire is straightened. I usually put all the beads into one bowl but because this tutorial uses so many different types of beads it is best to organise them into separate bowls so that it is easy to follow the instructions. Do take note, these are not the actual size and the name of the beads. For teaching purposes I have given them names, the numbers are for identifying the beads. For example the letters are usually the colour, E for I, R for red, W for white, G for gold. The numbers are just there to distinguish the difference between the beads. Just pause and watch how I perform the two securing methods before we start making the fish. To start off, thread through six red beads into the string. Hold the beads with one hand and that the beads are in the centre and adjust the strings until they are the same length with the other hand. Next, I'm going to show you how to secure the beads. There's actually two methods. This is method one. I call this method the crossover method. Usually after you follow the instructions, on the final bead you will perform this method. You will use the left string and pass it through into the last bead on the right hand side. You pass it from the top to the bottom. So once complete you should have crossed over the strings. This is represented with an X in my instructions. So when you see an X, you will perform either this method or method 2. This is great to use when your right hand side string is getting shorter than your left hand side string. The only downside of using this method is, it's not very secure and the beads become loose. Method 2 is the most popular method I use, simply because it's more secure. But the only problem is, if the holes in your beads are too small, you might not be able to do this. Method 2 requires you to use the final bead and this time you are going to use the right hand side string you are going to pass it through the final bead again this time you are going to create a lasso then what you can do is put your finger through this lasso and pick up the left hand side string pull it through and pull tight both ends this will create a secure knot you shouldn't be able to see this if the holes are too small in your bead and you perform this method, you might not be able to pass the string through it the third time or the fourth time. You shouldn't have a problem with using this method on this beaded fish. This is the only rule you need to remember. This is the left hand side string, this is the right hand side string. Even when you turn it around, this side is the left hand side and this side is the right hand side. Even when you turn it up, this is left, this is right. So let's begin. So start off with six red beads, perform an X to secure the beads and you're ready to go. Right hand side string, you are going to pick up white one. Then gold one. I and then the X will be the securing method. Remember we are going to use method two here. Method two is much more secure, so I recommend you to use that.
Then with the left ring, you are going to pass it through the next red bead of the eyeball. Right hand side string, you are going to pass two gold one beads. And then secure with method two.
For making the fins, the right hand side string you are going to thread in gold four bead. For the small petal you are going to make sure it faces downwards. So that's up, this is down. Big petal, up, small petal down, big petal up, and then gold full bead. Thread this through the thin bead again. To make it more secure, I would advise you to thread this through all the beads and petals again and then back through the thin bead. That means you would have thread through twice. This way it would make the fins more secure.
now you can pass the left hand side string to the last two beads. This is optional if you want to finish the fish with the final bead in the centre at the back. If you do leave it out, the fish has a more rounder finish. But I don't like to see a hole at the back, so I'm going to show you how to finish off the fish with the final bead. Make sure when you put the bead in, the hole goes from top to bottom, and never from side to side. You're trying to achieve a figure of eight. So with the top string you're going to thread it through the bead until you get to the centre. And then to the left until it's all the way round and back down the bead. and then you are going to secure. If you like, you can always pass the thread through all the way round until you get a figure eight and back down to the bottom again. I like to secure this with at least two to three knots. Before cutting off, you can always thread the strings through all the beads and then cut off. If you have been searching around for beaded goldfishes, you probably wonder why I attached the tail separately. That's because I find it more secure without worrying about all the other beads getting loose and I can just concentrate on just the tail.
If you have enjoyed watching this tutorial, please hit the like and subscribe button for more tutorials from Shelly Makes. I have seen many beaded accessories around, but I've never really taken any notice of them until I spotted these ones. After searching the internet for days and visiting the local library, I couldn't find any instructions on how to make this goldfish. There were other similar fishes online, but not this design, and I was adamant that I want to learn to make this one. So after 6 hours of practicing, I managed to make this fish and also write out my instructions so I can share with you guys today. If you buy this brand of fishing wire, it is number 5, but usually it's 0.5mm fishing wire. If you do decide to use this brand, make sure it's not a stretchy, even though it does say strong and stretchy. If you do buy it in small reels like this one, the fishing wire comes out quite curly. If you are using a small candle, just make sure you stretch the wire and hold it about an inch above the flame. Move it a few times and you should be able to relax the string. You could always use a gas stove or a cooker, but the flames would be much hotter and more likely to melt the string. This is what a burnt fishing wire looks like. It is brittle and might break easily. It is vital to use the correct size wire with the right size bead. As you can see on the left hand side, the fish is much tougher than the one on the right. It is also important to make sure the string passes through the hole in the bead twice but in some designs you are required to pass the string through three times or even four so if you can make sure you do a test before you buy the bead. These are two of my fishes made between one to two weeks apart as you can see there is a slight colour variation. The orange is much more intense on the left hand side compared to the one on the right. This is to do with the batch when the beads were made. They don't always get the colour quite right. There's always two to three shades of difference. Also the beads are not 100% perfect. Sometimes you will find slight little defects, for example, little air bubbles. This is actually normal, especially in plastic beads. What I usually do is just turn them around so you don't see them. Same too goes with the petals. If you have enjoyed watching this tutorial, please hit the like and subscribe button for more tutorials from Shelly Makes.